Mac Barnett. I'm John Clausen. And together we created the Three Billy Goats Gruff. I love fairy tales. I've always loved fairy tales. They were my favorite stories to read and especially my favorite stories to have read to me. And the Three Billy Goats Gruff is a perfect picture book story. It is so visually funny, such a striking, tense story. We just wanted to make the best possible version to read aloud at a story time or bedtime, just a big crowd pleaser. I was super excited for this book just because it's um, it's a set piece. It takes place on one bridge in one gully. The goats are trying to get from point A to point B, and you really only hold on this one place the whole time. It's sort of fantastical because we have trolls and we have talking goats, but the way I wanted to treat the illustrations was fairly realistic and not fantastical. It looks like a pretty crummy little bridge that you would find maybe over a gully that isn't walked over too often. We hope you enjoy our take on the Three Billy Goats Gruff. It was a lot of fun to make, and we think it's pretty great. So we hope you like it too. When I was in the fourth grade, I read a young adult biography of Martin Luther King Jr. And in that book, I learned the story of Rosa Parks and her pivotal contributions to the civil rights struggle in this country. Since then, I have dedicated my life to studying Black women who have made a change in their environment across history. Stand Up, 10 Mighty Women Who Made a Change is my tribute to some of my most favorite of these women. Women like Mum Bet, also known as Elizabeth Freeman, Ida B. Wells, my beloved Rosa Parks, and contemporary sheroes like Mari Copaney, Miss Flint, and Brie Newsome. I was an excited kid who loved learning about history, and I hope that a newer generation of young people who want to know about how Black women and girls have contributed to the American freedom struggle will pick up this book and see themselves and get excited about the possibilities. Come on, it's time. Stand up. Hi, I'm Belen Woodard, the author of the new book, More Than Peach. Has anyone ever asked you to hand them the skin color crayon? Did you know they meant the peach crayon and maybe your skin wasn't peach or you knew that not everyone's skin was? I noticed this dilemma a few years ago in my classroom and I decided to do something about it. Instead of handing them the peach crayon, I asked, which one? Skin could be a number of any different beautiful colors. Not only did I change the language in my classroom, but I also created more than peach crayons that are for all skin colors. My book with illustrations by Fanny Liam tells the story of how I became the world's first crown activist. It also includes a guide to help kids make change in their own community. Together, we can make sure no kid feels disincluded. Hi, I'm Hannah Stiefel, author of The Tower of Life, illustrated by Susan Gall. I was inspired to tell Yafa Elioth's story when I read about her in the New York Times. Jaffa was born in a town called Eisenstadt in Poland in 1935. Her grandmother was the town photographer and people would send their family photographs to their relatives all over the world on the eve of the Jewish New Year. But in 1941, the Nazis invaded and Jaffa and her family fled. In two days, 900 years of history in Eisenstadt were uprooted. And in 1979, Jimmy Carter asked Yaffa to help build a memorial to the victims of the Holocaust in Washington, D.C. But Yaffa didn't want to focus on death and darkness. Instead, she wanted to focus on lives lived, not lost. So she set out on a sacred mission to travel the world and find photographs of every man, woman, and child who had lived in Aisha Shock. Yaffa would want all children today to see themselves in these photographs and appreciate our shared humanity. Hey everyone, I'm Charles R. Smith Jr. Here to talk about my newest book, Bessie the Motorcycle Queen. When I came across Bessie's story years ago, I had never heard of this young black woman who traveled by motorcycle across the country during the 1920s with their destinations determined by a flip of the coin. I saw this and I saw some of the tricks that she could do and I was so impressed that I just had to do a book about Bessie and share her story. And so I'm excited to finally present it to you. 
The illustrator, Charlotte Christensen, did an amazing job showing the beautiful landscapes that Bessie traveled through, Bessie's beautiful face, as well as some of the hardships that Bessie had to deal with. Ultimately, it's a story of adventure, dreams, and determination. And I hope that you enjoy reading it as much as I enjoyed writing it. Hello, I'm Lizette Serrano. I am so excited to share a truly awesome middle grade list for the fall preview. We have new books from Alan Gratz, Amy Serin King, Raman Philbrick, Sarah Malinowski, and Cece Harrison shares her beautiful debut, Wild Oak. See, I told you, awesome. <laughs> You'll be hearing from all of them and more in just a minute. But first, let me tell you about a few more titles. Fans of Judy Bloom, The Vander Beekers 141st Street, and The Penderwicks will love Honey and Me, a funny, charismatic story of Mila, a Jewish girl striving to forge her own identity in the shadow of her fearless best friend, Honey. Charming, authentic, and wise, Honey and Me is a classic coming-of-age story filled with relatable middle-grade struggles, keen insight, and sparkling humor. Next up is Controlled Burn, a story that blends family, friendship, and the rocky path towards healing our deepest fears. 12-year-old Maya's parents says she's lucky to have smelled the smoke and pulled her sister, Amelia, out of their burning house. But is it really lucky when Amelia's in the hospital covered in burns and Maya knows it was her candle that started the fire in the first place? As she begins to figure out how to face her guilt, she'll discover there's a fine line between fear and adventure. And when danger strikes again, Maya must summon all her bravery to save those she loves the most. Publishers Weekly called The Last Gate of the Emperor an enthralling tale of resilience, family, and bravery that will entertain young sci-fi lovers. The second in the series, The Royal Trials, lives up to that and more. Yared has traveled light years to find his place in the universe, but the space-faring Axum Empire is still fractured. Now they return to the planet where the galaxy-expanding civilization began, Earth. Kelly Yang fans, get ready. Mia Tang is going for the goal and key player, the fourth front desk novel by New York Times bestselling author Kelly Yang. The Women's World Cup is coming to Southern California. Everyone is soccer crazy, especially Mia. As Mia aims for her goal, she'll have to face prejudice, discrimination, and her own fears. But if anyone can find a way to win, it's Mia Tang. Hi, my name is Christina Harrington, and I could not be more excited to tell you a little bit about my debut novel, Wild Oak. It's set in 1963 in the UK, when it was actually possible to buy big cats like lions and leopards from Harrods a famous department store in London. On one level, this is a story about an abandoned snow leopard, an ancient forest, and a child who stutters when she speaks to humans, but not to animals. Sometimes painful, sometimes funny, and sometimes really exciting. At its heart, Wild Oak is a book about understanding and how we might better understand ourselves and one another, not only as unique individuals, but as human beings who are all part of the natural world because we're all interconnected and everything communicates. Humans, animals, and as we now know, entire forests. It's just not in the same language. As a writer, I believe passionately in the power of story to foster compassion and empathy, as well as action. Thank you so much for listening. I really hope you enjoy it. Hi. I'm Amy Sarad King, and I want to tell you a little about Attack of the Black Rectangles. At its core, Attack of the Black Rectangles is a book about a town that's been taken over by people who think they know what's best for everyone. For Mac Delaney, our main character, it's about the words that have been crossed out in The Devil's Arithmetic, his reading book from school, and what to do about them, as well as what to do about the half-truths taught to him in his history class. But it's also about how he might have his first crush, and it's also about how his estranged dad isn't acting like a good guy and how he's not really sure what to do about it. I wrote this novel because my son's copy of The Devil's Arithmetic was censored the same way as in the novel and we weren't able to solve the problem. So I wanted to write a book that had a better outcome than we did. Plus, I got to write Jane Yolen into my novel as a character and that was so much fun. <laughs> but in the end, Attack of the Black Rectangles is a thoughtful book about authority and how to fight against it when it's necessary. 
Hi, I'm Malia Siddiqui, author of Baraka Beats, and I'm here to tell you about my next novel. Bye For Now follows twin brothers Usher and Shahir, who were separated as babies after their parents' messy divorce. Neither knows the other exists, but then they meet on Shahir's first day at his new school, and the secret finally gets out. Now, these two long lost brothers, who have nothing in common, decide to secretly switch identities to get to know the parent they've been separated from. But Usher and Shahir don't exactly get off on the right foot. If any of this sounds familiar to you, it's because Bye For Now is a fun new twist on one of my favorite movies growing up, The Parent Trap. Usher and Shahir were inspired in part by my own brothers. Growing up, I rarely saw boys with the kind of bond that they have, and I thought that kind of relationship from a young age was something truly special. Bye For Now is a heartwarming family and friendship story about these brothers who must learn to trust each other, and I hope you love it as much as I do. Hi, I'm Alan Grants, and if you liked my other books like Refugee and Ground Zero, I think you'll love my new book, Two Degrees. Two Degrees is a story of desperate survival in the face of overwhelming danger. In the Sierra Nevada mountains of California, Akira and her horse struggled to escape a massive wildfire. In Churchill, Manitoba, Owen and his friend George flee starving polar bears that have been stranded on land by melting sea ice. And in Miami, Florida, Natalie fights to keep her head above water and save her neighbor's dog as her city drowns in a hurricane. Though they live thousands of miles from each other and face unique challenges, Akira, Owen, George, and Natalie will come to understand that they are deeply connected in ways that will change their lives and, just maybe, change the world. I hope you'll read Two Degrees and that it connects with you too. Hi everyone, my name is Lindsay Puckett and I am the author of The Glass Witch, a middle grade fantasy pitched as Hocus Pocus meets Julia Murphy's Dumplin'. The story follows 12 year old Addie, who is a little chubby angry witch who begrudgingly has to join the town's Halloween themed pageant in order to rid the town of a vicious witch hunter. I wrote this story because in middle school, I never got to see girls that look like me get to slay the dragon or pull the sword from the stone or, you know, just be the hero. It seems like if there was a chubby girl, she was always allocated to the comic relief side character or far more likely the villain. I realized that I hadn't just written the book that I needed for me, but really it was a book that could be shared with other chubby, spicy, little angry girls out there who never got to see themselves as the heroes and the stories they so desperately needed. Hi, my name is Rod Philbrick and I'm going to tell you how I came up with the idea for my latest novel, We Own the Sky. My family had an old sea trunk full of photographs when I was a kid, and some of those photographs were of my very young at the time, Irish Catholic grandmother, uh, who had come from Chicago to settle into a very small town in New Hampshire. And family legend had it that soon after she arrived, the Ku Klux Klan surrounded the house at night and burned a cross because of the fact that she was both Irish and Catholic. The other photographs included some of my grandfather's first cousin, a really remarkable woman named Ruth Law. She was one of the early aviators back in the day, and she became very famous as a long-distance flyer and eventually had a flying circus. And for years I wondered how I could combine those two themes and come up with one coherent story, which I think I finally managed to do, and I hope you enjoy it. Hi, I'm Miles. Uh, on the surface, The Terrell Show is a funny and poignant look at Terrell Edwards, an 11-year-old African-American boy who's a lot like most kids his age. I mean, he's busy balancing a life filled with school, friendships, home life, hopes, plans, expectations, and realities. But really, it's about learning to process life as you practice naming your inner feelings and then finding comfortable ways to honestly and effectively communicate with others. Terrell's Solution is a daily imaginary podcast that he does in his head, a podcast that he does for an audience of one himself, and occasionally his buddy Boogie, who somehow thinks he's a co-host in Terrell's head. That's Boogie. Through this podcast, Terrell has an opportunity to process key moments from his life, some funny, some stressful, some emotional, but all get an honest look as he learns to name his feelings and to seek help from his trusted but unknowing podcast guests. So please check out The Terrell Show. With an audience of only one, he could definitely use the ratings. 
Hi, I'm Sarah Malinowski, the author of Whatever After and the co-author of Upside Down Magic. Today I'm here to tell you about my new novel and series, Best Wishes. Becca Singer is a 10-year-old girl living in New York City. After Becca's best friend tells her she doesn't want to be friends anymore, Becca receives a mysterious package in the mail that contains a magical wish-granting bracelet. Becca wishes for friends. Lots of friends. Suddenly, all the kids at school want to be besties. So does her mom and her principal. Chaos ensues. By the end of the book, Becca learns that she's brave and strong enough to make her own magic. Then a new name and address appear on the package. Addie Asante in Ohio. And Becca mails it off. I created Best Wishes because I love stories about wish fulfillment, but also because now more than ever, I wanted to celebrate the power of connection, the importance of kindness, and the true magic of friendship. Happy wishing! Hi, I'm Cassandra Pelham Fulton, Editorial Director for the Graphics Imprint. Our Fall 22 graphic novel list includes new titles from Christina Soon Tornbot, Joanna Cacao, Gail Galligan, Christina Diaz Gonzalez, and Gabriella Epstein. We also welcome Shauna J. Grant, Aoife Dooley, Jamar Nicholas, and Lewis Hancox to our list. But before you hear from them, I'd like to tell you about a few new series titles that we are very excited about. Cat Kid Comic Club is back with a fourth book. Naomi, Melvin, Flippy, Lil Petey, Molly, and 19 baby frog siblings return in a new book from worldwide best-selling author Dave Pilkey. The variety of art styles paired with Dave's trademark storytelling and humor fosters creativity, collaboration, independence, and empathy. Next up, Miles Morales, Stranger Tides, written by Justin A. Reynolds and illustrated by Pablo Leon. Join Miles in his most epic adventure yet. When Spider-Man is invited to a launch for a brand new video game, things go sideways fast. Anyone who plays the game is frozen, and it's all because of a villain named The Stranger. Left with the fate of the world in his hands, can Miles turn old foes to friends and find the answers he needs in time? I Survived Hurricane Katrina is the sixth graphic novel adaptation in Lauren Tarshish's best-selling series. It's the story of a boy, a dog, and the tragic storm of the century brought vividly to life with art by Alvin Epps. When Barry's little sister becomes terribly sick, his family has to stay home and wait out the hurricane. Then the levees break and Barry is swept away by the floodwaters and separated from his family. Can he survive the storm on his own? Finally, we have the second book in the Magical Boy series by The Cow, a wonderfully imaginative fantasy series starring Max. Max is an average trans boy just trying to get through high school, but on top of classes, crushes, and coming out, Max's life is turned upside down when his mom reveals an old family secret. He's descended from a long line of magical girls tasked with defending humanity from a dark, ancient evil. Pretty cool, right? Now, let's hear from the authors. Hi there. My name is Shauna J. Grant, and I'm the creator of Mimi and the Cutie Catastrophe. It's a story about a girl named Mimi exploring all the ways that she could be more than just cute. But the more Mimi tries to change herself, the more she realizes it's best to be true to herself and true to her friends. I grew up in New York City, and I've always wanted to create stories that reflected my childhood, sprinkled with a dose of magic. While working on Mimi, I was inspired by memories of playing with my cousins as a child and how important it is to show black and brown children experiencing a joyful, magical life. I hope this book inspires kids to find the magic inside themselves, just as Mimi does. I'm Christina Suntornbot, and I'm the author of The Tryout. My name is Joanna Cacao, and I'm the illustrator. This is the story of when I tried out for middle school cheerleader, when I had to perform in a huge gym with every kid in my grade watching, and then they all voted on who would make the squad. This is also the story of growing up as an Asian American kid in a small Texas town. It's about making the best friends of my life. 
And it's about how middle school can sometimes be horrifying, but it can also be hilarious and unforgettable. Growing up, I went to predominantly white schools in elementary and middle school and have experienced similar situations that are in this story. I hope through my drawings that were influenced by the many TV shows that I watched while growing up, you will laugh and connect with these wonderful characters as they go through their ups and downs in middle school. We hope you enjoyed the tryout. Hi, I'm Christina Diaz Gonzalez, and I am the author of the upcoming graphic novel, Invisible. Hi, I'm Gabriella Epstein, and I'm the illustrator. So Invisible is the story of five middle school Latinx kids who really think that they have nothing in common with each other. They're pretty different, and yet they're thrust together to do this school project because the world around them sees them as the same. It's through a series of events that happen that eventually the world starts seeing them as individuals and they see each other's commonality. I think that it's really cool to have a combination of art and words that can help kids kind of move into this new language and also feel represented because there is a representation for Latinx kids. Being able to portray that through um, a visual medium through graphic novels was really fun to do. Frankly, it was very easy to use this as a springboard to kind of bring to fruition a lot of my own experiences. We hope you enjoy reading Invisible. Hi, I'm Gail Gallagher, creator of four Babysitter's Club graphic novel adaptations, and I'm so excited to talk to you about my first original graphic novel, Freestyle. Freestyle is about a middle school boy named Corey who's been with his dance group, his best friends for years. Now they all really want to go to a big competition together before they have to split up for different high schools, but their captain is becoming so focused on them winning that it's stressing all of them out. When Corey is introduced to the art of yo-yo, he finds everything he's been missing lately. Experimentation, creativity, and the joy of trying something new. He's been pulled in all of these different directions and has to figure out how to express what's most important to him. I had so much fun making Freestyle, and if you enjoy reading it even half as much, I will be so happy. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, I'm Aoife Dooley, and I'm an author and illustrator from Dublin, Ireland, and I'm really excited to tell you all about my new graphic novel, Frankie's World. Frankie is 11 years old, but she's a little bit different to everyone else in her class, and she's not really sure why. She thinks it's maybe because she has a new freckle or the fact that she has to go to hospital sometimes. She's never met her dad, he left when she was a baby and she starts to think, what if I'm like him? What if he's an alien? So she goes on an adventure with her best friend Sam or Rebecca to try and find him. But will he have the answers that Frankie's looking for? I wrote Frankie's World because when I was growing up, there was no one like me in books. I could never see myself as a character in books. And it was only as I got older, um, I got diagnosed with autism. And writing Frankie's World was really like giving a hope to my younger self to let them know that they're okay. And I want other kids to see themselves in these characters and to let them know that there's a whole community of people out there just like them. Hey guys, how are you? I'm Jamar Nicholas, author and illustrator of Leon the Extraordinary. Leon is the story of a kid who grows up in a super world when he's not so super. So how do you fit in when everyone around you has powers and you don't? I think there's a great way that a young kid can still be a hero when he's surrounded by people who are a lot more powerful than himself. Leon's a love letter to my childhood and also the relationship with my mother. I grew up as a latchkey kid back when kids had a key to their house and would come home after school to a dark environment, which doesn't really exist anymore. But the soul and the heart is there of a kid who grows up with his mother and it's just them against the world. That's a very special time for me. And I hope that comes out in the book. Hey everyone, I'm Lewis Hancock, the author illustrator of Welcome to St. Hell. Growing up in a small town in the early noughties, the word trans wasn't even on my radar. All I knew was that I felt like a boy, but I was supposed to be a girl. I had no role models. There was nobody in the media that I could really connect with. So I wanted to create the book that I wish I'd had as a troubled teen to share my story with no holds barred, all the nitty gritty cringy details. 
in the hopes that I could help inspire other people to be proud of who they really are. I think my aim has always been to incidentally educate through entertainment and to bring being trans into the mainstream. I wanted to make sure the book was relatable to everyone who's ever been an awkward misfit teenager just trying to find yourself. I really hope you enjoy my story, Welcome to St Hell. Hi, I'm David Levithan, Editorial Director and Publisher here at Scholastic, and so excited to be presenting the YA titles and to kick off the YA part of our preview. We've got such an extraordinary fall list with so many incredible authors and incredible stories to be told. A couple of them that I'm particularly excited about, I don't know about you, but I want to live in a heartstopper world. And Alice Oseman is just one of the best writers of YA today. And I'm so glad that we have a novel from her on our fall list, I Was Born for This, which follows Angel, who is the fan of a band called The Ark, and Jimmy, who is the trans lead singer of that band. And the book is all about how their lives end up crashing together and how they end up helping each other. Um, it is wonderful if you love Heartstopper, if you loved Alice's novel, Loveless, you're really going to love I Was Born For This. In a completely different direction, showing the diversity of our list, we have Beneath the Wide Silk Sky. This is a spectacular debut, and it's a historical novel in the tradition of Ruta Sepetis or Sharon Cameron. It's a completely compelling story about um, a family that is hit by the internment of Japanese citizens during World War II here in America. It is a devastating read, but it is an illuminating read and again marks um, the debut of Emily Inoue Huey, who I think is just going to have a long career in YA, writing this beautiful, beautiful historical fiction. And then another one that I wish was not as timely as it is is Sarah Dare's Some Kind of Hate. And this is the story, um, which is all too true, about a boy named Declan who, because of gaming and because of video games, gets drawn into the world of white nationalism and anti-Semitism. And it is, again, so of the moment, and it's something we really need to be talking about. Um, it is a, such a strong, strong, strong novel about so the seeds of hate and how we can actually counterbalance the seeds of hate. Um, we have some early blurbs. Um, Liza Weimer, the author of The Assignment, called it thoughtful, meticulous, and devastating reveal devastatingly revealing. And Jonathan Greenblatt, the CEO of the Anti-Defamation League, said this is truly a story for our times. And unfortunately it is, but that is why it's so great that we have YA literature to be that counterbalance and to give context to all of these challenges that we have as a society right now. Hi, my name is Lamar Giles, the author of Scholastic Novels, Overturned and Spin. Today I'm here to tell you about my newest novel, The Getaway, where I invite you to spend time at a resort like no other. Welcome to Karloff Country, where high walls and high tech security provide vacationers a luxurious oasis from the many troubles of the outside world. Dedicated helpers like our hero, Jay Butler, are available to service every need until society collapses. And very rich, very powerful, very cruel people descend on Karloff to ride out an all too plausible apocalypse. As the terrifying truth about the resort is revealed, Jay and his friends will have to risk everything to save themselves, their families, and their very way of life. But is the nightmare inside Karloff Country's walls worse than what awaits outside? Find out when you embark on the getaway. Enjoy your stay. I'm Harper Glenn, author of Monarch Rising. Monarch Rising is a book about two teens, Joe Monarch and Cove Wells. Joe craves love and Cove, well, Cove believes that love's a tool. I wrote this book to explore love, as well as much like my character Joe, I grew up poor and wish for more. If you're a reader reading, I hope you enjoy this book just as much as I enjoy creating it. And if you're a writer writing, don't give up.
Hi, I'm Kelly Andrew, and I'm the author of The Whispering Dark, a dark academia about a deaf girl named Delaney with a peculiar connection to the afterlife. When Delaney is accepted to a prestigious program specializing in the study of alternate universes, she is determined to make something of herself and prove that she belongs. Instead, she quickly finds herself at odds with Colton Price, an undergraduate teaching assistant who seems hell-bent to despise her no matter what she does. When several students turn up dead, Delaney and Colton are forced to work together in order to uncover deeply buried university secrets. Delaney's story is incredibly significant to me because she and I share the same profound hearing loss. When I first began writing, I set out to depict a deaf heroine whose story is shaped, but not defined, by her disability. Delaney is overlooked as the chosen one due to the way that others perceive her, but in the end, she turns out to be the one most capable of saving the day. Hi, I'm Debbie Rigaud, author of Simone Breaks All the Rules and the forthcoming A Girl's Guide to Love and Magic. When a rogue voodoo spirit seems to take possession of Sicily's high priestess aunt, she enlists the help of a fast thinking bestie and her very cute crush um, to gather the ceremonial items they'll need to unpossess her aunt. I set Sicily's story at Brooklyn's annual West Indian American Day Parade because it is the perfect setting for a book that celebrates culture, traditions, and also asks nagging questions about what we consider taboo and why. Writing this book was my way of dancing, celebrating, falling in love, and just being magical in the face of the stigma that are slapped on Haitian voodoo and other belief systems like it. And I invite readers to join the party. Hello everyone, my name is Vitor Martins, I am a Brazilian writer and I am the author of Here the Whole Time. But today I'm here to talk about my new book, This Is Our Place. This Is Our Place tells the story of three gay teenagers, Anna, Greg and Beto. And the three of them lived in the same house, the house number eight in the Sunflower Street, in three different years, the years 2000, 2010 and 2020. The book is narrated by the house itself, and it's a very slice of life kind of story, uh, but overall it's a story about falling in love for the first time and breaking up for the first time and not knowing what to do next with their life. And I believe This Is Our Place is a book about all of those tiny queer experiences that are kind of universal and we share with our future and best members of our community, because those kind of experiences really tie us together through time. Hello, I'm Emily Heddleson, Director of Educational and Library Marketing. What a joy to be with you all today talking about my favorite type of book, nonfiction. We are so lucky to be welcoming naturalist, photographer, and author Nick Bishop back with a gorgeous new book. Nick has been awarded the Cybert Medal, three Cybert Honors, and numerous other accolades. And with titles like Spiders and Big Cats, we can understand why. With elephants, we get an incredible look at these sensitive, intelligent creatures. There is a need for more well-researched, beautiful, and accessible nonfiction picture books, and this answers the call. Nick's detailed photography and informative, clearly written prose will enthrall and inform animal lovers of all ages. Our Engaging Shiro's series acknowledges the many contributions and accomplishments of women throughout history. This fall, we have titles covering civil rights, global activists like Greta Thunberg and indigenous peoples. The books include reader questions, a pictorial timeline, maps, and additional educational matter. Water is essential for life, and the SLP Water Series is essential for young readers who are learning about our environment, our ecosystems, and the global water crisis. Each book in the series includes photos and engaging illustrations actionable information to motivate and galvanize young readers, and hands-on activities. The Titanic is one of the most popular nonfiction topics for young people. So we hear you, and you're welcome. You get a whole series. These books delve into various aspects of the story, the engineering feats behind its original construction, what happened during the sailing and sinking, details about the individuals on board, and an exploration of the ship's discovery in 1985. These titles feature first-hand accounts, artwork and diagrams, timelines, and additional back matter. Now you'll hear from the experts themselves.
<laughs> Greetings, Earthlings. I've come a long way, light years, in fact, to tell you about Candace Fleming's new middle grade nonfiction book, Crash from Outer Space. Did an alien spacecraft really crash outside Roswell, New Mexico on that hot July night in 1947? Did a cabal of top secret military specialists really sanitize that site, hide the evidence, and then lie to the American public? Fleming takes readers on a gripping, sometimes weird, often incredible, twisty tale of a mystery, from alien encounters to alien abduction. Fleming also invites readers to become UFO investigators themselves, teasing out the truth. Did it really happen or do you just wish that it did? My name is Barbara Benz and I'm the author of Unlawful Orders. The book is a biography covering the moral dilemma James Williams, a soldier from a small town in New Mexico, faced before, during, and after the World War II Freeman Field Mutiny. While here's the book's focal point, I wrote the story because of a fascination for his mother. Clarabelle Williams and I lived parallel lives. She was an eldest child who had to help care for her younger siblings, like me. At Freeman Field, Indiana, her middle son, a Tuskegee Airman in future surgeon, refused to use I was just following orders as an excuse for betraying his conscience, although he knew the consequence could be his execution. And I was happy to highlight a Latino soldier who made the same choice, Esteban Hotes the only Tuskegee Airman from the Dominican Republic. If young readers take only one thing from unlawful orders, I hope they see there are heroes all around them. Hi, my name is Katie Haidt, and I'm a senior editor here at Scholastic, and I am delighted to be introducing Caves to You Today, written by Nell Cross Beckerman and illustrated by debut illustrator Kaylin Talk. Caves is a poetic exploration into the subterranean worlds um, that we all love. It juxtaposes a delightful read aloud poetic text with nonfiction information. And it's going to be the perfect exploration into these ecosystems for the young kids in your life. As a child, my parents used to read nonfiction books to me. Um, the stories were about the importance of African American history, prayer, our family, education. As I listened, I remember feeling really proud and really inspired. And over the years, I've always been in search of more of these stories, stories that affirmed my existence, stories that reflected my lived experiences. In my most recent book, If You Traveled on the Underground Railroad, readers get the chance to have all of their questions answered about efforts to free and escape from enslavement. In addition to uh, Steffi Warhol's amazing images, the book answers 25 questions, Questions like, was there um, an actual railroad? Um, what was slavery? And I continue to write these stories for children who uh, desire to read these truths and to have all of their questions answered.